seated. The board of the can reflect the presence of the defendant, his counsel, the assistant state attorneys, and as well as the lady and gentlemen jury. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the late start. Hopefully everybody's all right. Uh, and, uh, we appreciate your patience. We also appreciate the fact that you're all here. And we thank you. But we're ready to begin again. Uh, when we left off last week, the state was still on this case in chief. Uh, Madam, who's your next witness? Susan Johnson of T-Mobile. Susan Johnson, please. Susan Johnson? Yes, sir. Welcome. Thank you. What I'd like you to do is uh, raise your right hand for us. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you shall give in this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Do you state your full legal name for the record? Susan Johnson. Do you spell your first and last name for the court reporter? S-U-S-A-N. J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Please have a seat. Thank you. Ms. Johnson, that microphone in front of you will adjust up or down, but not back and forth. Okay? Thank you. Are you ready to proceed, ma'am? Yes, sir. Counsel, you may. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Johnson. How are you today? Good, thank you. Could you please introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury and tell them where you work? Sure. My name is Susan Johnson, and I work for T-Mobile. How long have you worked for T-Mobile? A uh, total of 26 years. And what do you do for T-Mobile? I am a manager within the Legal Respons Emergency Response Unit. Prior to working for T-Mobile, did you work for any other telecommunications companies? Yes, I did. And what were those? Uh, AT&T Wireless. And how long did you work for AT&T? Five years. How long in total have you worked in the telecommunications industry? Uh, 31 years. So you indicated you were part of the manager of the emergency response? Legal emergency response. And what does that mean? That means that we respond to subpoenas and other legal demands from various agencies across the United States. And when you say a legal demand, what would you mean by that? A uh, subpoena or a court order, search warrant. In terms of the records when you work with them, how often do you work with them? Every day. What do you do with the records? Uh, so we're able to retrieve the information from our secure computer database. Uh, and then send the response back to the agency that's requesting. And I know this might sound silly, but what type of company is T-Mobile? We're a wireless telephone carrier. And is T-Mobile the parent company of any other wireless carriers? Uh, we did acquire Sprint. Okay. How long has T-Mobile been the parent company for Sprint? Uh, April 1st, 2020 is when we acquired them. In terms of the information that is kept by T-Mobile, do you keep phone call records? Yes. What would you call those? Call detail records. Do you keep information regarding the networks? Yes. Do you keep information regarding subscribers? Yes. What type of information is kept in a call detail record? So call detail reports will show incoming and outgoing phone calls or text messages made or received by the cellular telephone. Does T-Mobile keep that information as to when data is used? Yes. Will a data phone call or video call show up in call detail records? No. Does the information show for who is being called? Yes, it will show the uh, transaction of the outbound or inbound phone call on the call detail records. Does T-Mobile keep the cell site information for the call that the outgoing non-T-Mobile subscriber? Yeah. No. What's the purpose of collecting this information at T-Mobile? Uh, billing purposes. Um, is there any consideration as to the health and optimization of the network? So we keep uh, what is known as timing advance records, um, which is solely for engineering uh, purposes so that they are able to check up on the network, yes. 
when a phone call is made from a cellular device or handset, can you describe from the network perspective how, what happens? Sure. So what happens is the phone reaches out to the tower with the strongest signal, which is not necessarily the closest tower. So for example, we can have a tower on top of the building, or we can have one down the street. However, the one down the street might be the stronger signal and would pick up that call. At that point, it's transferred to our switch, and our switch is what records all the information that you will see on the call detail records. At that point, it's then transferred to a landline company, and it's the landline company that actually delivers the call. So you mentioned true call data. What is that? So true call data is um, for the network. It um, will show where the phone is connected to when it's not in use, as long as it's turned on. Does Sprint also have a similar type of data? Yes. What is per call measurement data? Correct. Is that the same for true call, for the Sprint analogy? Correct, that's Sprint's term. In terms of subscriber information, what types of subscriber information is kept? So the subscriber information, we have two types. Um, one would be a prepay, uh, and then the other would be a monthly account. So the prepay, what type of information could you have? So prepay, a customer is not required to provide their information, um, but they could provide a name, address, and date of birth. On the postpaid or the billed type, what type of information do you have? So we would have the name, uh, the address, date of birth, social security number, and we actually do a credit check on that individual. In terms of the individual using the specific phones or handsets, can you testify to that? No. How many times have you testified in court before? Uh, over a thousand times. Okay. Were you, as the record custodian, for T-Mobile provided legal process, and I'm going to go through them one by one, under reference tracking number for T-Mobile, 214-6318, for two phone numbers of 305-922-9533 and 954-376-9158. Yes. As the T-Mobile records custodian under tracking number 219-2645, where you provided records and requests and legal process for three phone numbers, 561-720-3210, 772-713-9807, and 954-376-9158? Yes. As the records custodian for T-Mobile and your T-Mobile tracking ID 208-1851, where you submitted a request for nine, phone number 954-248-9081. Yes. For T-Mobile tracking number 217-2715, for phone number 954-376-9158, where you provided a legal process to obtain the records for that issue. Yes. <clears throat> were you also under tracking number 205-8127, Provide ask to provide for legal process phone number records for 772-713-9807. Yes. Was Sprint at the time part now part of T-Mobile under the phone numbers for 772-713-2341 and 954-371-7895 under Sprint tracking number 2018-221418 provided legal process and requested to provide records. Yes. Was Sprint under case, Sprint case number 2019-15821 asked to provide records with regards to phone number 225-529-5054? Yes. Prior to coming into court today, did you have the opportunity to review the records that were provided? Yes, I did. Are these records made at or about the time they are created by a person with knowledge? Yes. Are they kept in the regular course of business of Sprint and T-Mobile? Yes, they are. Okay. Is it in the regular practice to keep such records? Yes. You know, at this time, approaching with what's been labeled as states OOO for identification purposes and previously shown to defense. Ms. Trump, did you recognize this USB? 
Yes, I do. How do you recognize it? Uh, my initials and today's date are on the uh, USB. And does the USB fairly and accurately represent the records that were provided by T-Mobile in response to the tracking numbers that we just discussed, as well as to Sprint and the tracking numbers and case numbers they just provided? Yes. Here at this time, the state would offer at state triple O, a state 63. Any objection? Yes, judge. Objection. Relevance. I'm sure watch him side <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, objection go rules that will be admitted. What's the next number? 63. 63 notes. Permission to publish? You may. I'm sorry, I didn't catch you. 63. 63. So I'm going to start with the Sprint records. What are we looking at in this particular file? 2018-221418-6155597. This would be the subscriber information. And in terms of
looking at this particular one, I'm going to zoom in. What is the billing name for this? Chris Thomas. And going to the second one, what is the billing name on this one? Uh, the first name is D-O-N-T-A-V-I-U-S. Last name is Withers, W-I-T-H-E-R-S. At the top of this screen capture, there's a B-A-N number. Do you know what that means? Yes. What is that? That would be the account number. Does that correlate with the other data that's been provided? Yes. Going to now the same word document file name. What are we looking at in this sprint document? Uh, this is also subscriber information. So you had mentioned that billing account number, that BAN number? Correct. If you can touch the screen in front of you, it, it, that can you can write on it and it will show up on the screen for the jurors. So if you could point out where the billing account number is here. And then what is the phone number that was being used by this account or the subject number? 772-713-2341. And is this again for that Chris Thomas billing account? Yes. Okay. Scrolling down to the next billing account number. Is this the other account that was we just looked at the subscriber information on for Dontavious Withers? Yes. And what is the phone number that's associated with this particular account? 954-371-7895. Going on to 2019 158-210-6566861. for the phone number in question on this particular record. Is that labeled right here? Yes. And what phone number is that? 225-529-5054. And looking at the Microsoft Excel viewer, can you explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what we're looking at here? Uh, these are the call detail records with cell site information for spread. Going over to the T-Mobile records. Just for demonstrative and illustrative purposes, when you are looking this particular one called Timing Advance LTE and UMTS underscore TN 772-713-9807. Then it has another underscore IMSI. What is an IMSI? That stands for International Mobile Subscriber Identity Number, which is the number that's associated with the SIM card found in the back of the phone. And the first, the 772-713-9807. What is that? That would be the phone number. Are all of these records provided by T-Mobile? Yes. In terms of completion codes, is that something that is reflected in these records? Yes. What is a completed successfully completion code? So that means that the call uh, went through the network successfully. What is an abnormal completion? An abnormal completion means the call did not go through. Perhaps the user hung up prior to the call connecting or a dropped call. Okay. In terms of what time frame are all of these records kept in? Uh, we keep them in uh, UTC time, which is coordinated universal time. So depending on what time of the year it is, you would have to subtract either four or five hours from the time that you see reflected in order to arrive at East Coast time. On October 26th of 2018, how many hours did you have to subtract? It would be minus four. The cell site locations indicate 
latitude and longitude of the cell site. Is that the, now there's also a physical address. Is the physical address always the same as the latitude and longitude? No. What could the physical address sometimes show? So that's what we refer to as an administrative address. Um, so we've used that for 911 purposes to get the exact location of the cell tower. You would take the two coordinates, the latitude and longitude, plot it into a mapping program such as Google Earth, and that will be the exact location. Is there nothing further to say, Mr. Council, is there any cross examination? One The technology that you um, just described um, for identifying locations, how, how is that verified by T-Mobile itself? That you would have to ask an engineer for. So you don't know how that's done? How it's verified? Yeah. As to what tower connected to? Is that what you're asking? Yes. So it's done with a radio frequency, is how the towers work. It's a signal. Okay, so but you were telling us earlier that the phone does not necessarily connect to the nearest tower. Correct. It connects to the tower with the strongest signal. Correct. So how is it that you know to approximate how, how do you know how far the phone is from the actual tower? I don't. Is there no way to tell that? No. Not through me. Not through you? Correct. And how do you know if the tower that the phone connected to is the closest tower or the one with the stronger signal? That would not be a question for me. You would have to ask an engineer. How would you know whether or not a phone defaults to a stronger strength? If you have a tower with a strong signal and another tower with a not so strong signal, or a signal that's not as strong as the other, are you with me so far? Yes. How would you know at what point the signal disparity is strong enough strong enough for it to default to the one that's further away as opposed to the one that's closer again that's a question for an engineer not for me so you have no way of of helping us understand any of this information that you just described correct um, you just Collect it when you're subpoenaed and you provide. Correct. And you're not familiar with the technology at all? Not the questions that you're asking, correct. Okay. Um, one. Is it correct that the data location information, the purpose that you worked with Sprint and with T-Mobile at some point? I'm a T-Mobile employee. And you were a Sprint employee at some point? No, sir. You were somewhere else? No? AT&T. AT&T. Correct. 
the purpose that AT&T and in this case now T-Mobile collects this data location uh, information is for billing. Correct. That's its only purpose. And network. Uh, engineers collect to optimize the network. Okay. It's not used for identifying the locations of customers' phones beyond the purpose of just billing. Correct. Redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Johnson, counsel asked you how you know how something didn't happen. Is that a fair question? Objection. Stay. Rephrase. With regards to these records, are they accurate? Objection. Yes. What's the objection? Lack of foundation, Chief. Watch your software. So, Ms. Johnson, with regards to the records, does the T-Mobile keep any record of something that doesn't happen? No. What is contained in the records that have been provided? Calls and text messages that have happened. Is this from the network's perspective? Yes. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. Is this witness excused? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You may step down. You're excused. Thank you, Thank Your Honor. You.